Hey everybody, and welcome back to MoWorks, another episode. Um, today is just treating us so good with this weather, with this sunshine and intermittent clouds. So much snow on the mountain up there, such a beautiful day to be out shooting, and I'm having a blast. Um, but we're actually toning down the blast a little bit today, which is funny when I say that holding a 30-06 Remington 783 with the nice walnut stock. Toning down the blast, how, you might ask? Well, what if I told you that we could take a 30-06 and make it shoot 32 ACP? That would be pretty strange, huh? Because this is, like, look how long this bolt is. Look how much uh, room it has, how much room the magazine has. How would you make that work? Well, that is what the people at the shooter's box asked themselves when they made this little contraption here. Now, this is your standard run-of-the-mill 30-06 round. Big brass case, big 150 grain FMJ on the end of that. And this is a 32 ACP round. Um, it's called semi-rimmed because it has this little tiny rim on it. You can see it's marked 32 auto. And this one is actually a self-defense round made by uh, uh, PPU, uh, Privy Partesian. I chose the self-defense round for this video because we're going to be shooting something through the barrel of a 30-06 that's not a 30-06. I wanted to have a little more oomph just to make sure it reaches the end of that barrel. But again, how does it work? Well, the people at theshootersbox.com made this guy. This is a steel 30-06 casing. Now, most people think of a steel casing and think, well, isn't that like the cheap ammo? Well, this is like hardened steel. This is like made to last, I'm assuming. Um, and the way it works is, you probably got a sneak peek at it right there, it's hollow. But hollow on the bottom too, it's open at both ends. And what that allows for is for the 32 ACP to slide right in the back there and sit flush with the rest of this little tiny barrel here. Now, the interesting part about this, as opposed to other chamber reducers you typically see with like a 12 gauge shotgun, is that after traveling through this casing, after this little bullet firing pin hits it on the back just like a regular 30 6 bullet, and after it travels through this casing, it'll actually, according to theshootersbox.com, engage with the rifling of our rifle and causing the bullet to spin and stabilize and uh, eventually hit our target. Now the reason why I do the air quotes there is obviously the rifling for a 30 6 rifle is going to be different than the rifling for a 32 ACP pistol. So it might just cause it to go wild, it might spin it too fast. I don't think it'll spin it apart, but you know that's what we're here for. That's what we're gonna check out today on MoWorks. So we're gonna do a couple different tests. Um, I actually didn't bring a reactive target for this guy. I'm a little disappointed. I think I have a water bottle in my car somewhere we can shoot at. We're going to do a basic accuracy test. We're going to do a penetration test against pine boards and compare it to 9mm and 22 um, from their respective uh, pistols and see if putting it through the full 22 inch barrel of our Remington 783 actually gives it any more power over say a 22 or a 9mm. And then maybe we'll try to do some uh, distance shooting, all if it actually works on the first time we shoot it. So let's get a couple shots downrange. All right, I'm gonna try to capture this as best I can for you guys. Open up our 30-06 breech. We load our 32 ACP into our steel shell here. We carefully guide that in there. It's a little harder because there's no uh, point on it to help it ease in there. Try to get it right down to that barrel. There we go. Locked in just fine. Wish me luck. We're going to shoot one shot and then we're going to check to make sure that it cleared the end of the barrel. Well, that sounded weird. Okay, and then of course, we're going to extract this 
very carefully. Oh, kind of did a little flip around in there. It's a little bit hot, a little bit dirty. And here's our 32 ACP. You can see some of the kickback kind of got back onto the um, bullet itself. Interesting little design, uh, maybe flaw there. Maybe it's not a perfect fit. Move the bolt. And yeah, it did clear it. So it did function as intended. I'm gonna give it about two more shots to make sure it's uh, working every single time. Really get this out of here. All right, so that one worked just fine. We'll check again just to make sure all of it went out the end because this is experimental here. Ooh, hit my target that time. And again, yeah, it seems like if we do it slow enough, it turns out just fine. All right, cool. Let's do a little bit of accuracy testing. So for this next test, um, we're going to be testing more for the tightness of the group, how close the shots are to each other, than where the group is actually located. That we're not particularly aiming for the bullseye itself. We will be aiming at the bullseye, but we're going to be seeing how tight the group is. Um, so even if it hits left, right, up, down, we're not sighting it in for the 32 ACP. We're just checking the tightness of the group. So here we are with our shoot and see target. We're going to shoot five shots this time. We're going to see how tight we can get them together. I'm going to be shooting from a prone position, probably, I don't know, about 10, 15 yards back. Right, it was taking about 45 seconds to a minute per shot because of how finicky that loading system is. But we can see I can easily cover up all of those with just the pad of my thumb pretty much. So actually a lot more accurate than I thought it was going to be. And uh, clearly went through this uh, three quarter inch plywood, no issue. I would expect that from most bullets. But now let's do our pine board test. So I imagine the concept here is fairly easy to grasp, but we're going to be lining up five pine boards and from a distance of 10 yards, I will shoot them first with the 32 ACP and then with a 22 long rifle loaded up with a CCI mini mag and then with a full metal jacket, nine millimeter round. Uh, and we'll see how they all compare. Actually, I'm going to change that to a Fiocchi 124 grain, I believe, hollow point 9mm bullet because we'll be shooting a hollow point mini mag, a hollow point 32 ACP. Seems only fair to shoot a hollow point 9mm, and we'll see how they all stack up. The 9mm and mini mag will be shot from their respective pistols the Keltec P17 for the mini mag and the Taurus G3C for the 9mm Fiocchi, um, but we will be shooting the 32 ACP from our 30-06 rifle. Unfortunately, I don't have a 32 ACP pistol and I don't have a 9mm rifle, so all things can't be fair here. Um, but we're really testing, you know, does that 32 ACP bullet really gain any oomph from being shot from that rifle? All right, let's get into it. 32 ACP up first. All right, so to my surprise, went through the first board, second board, 
third board, fourth board, and fifth board. Looks like it might have been keyholing there, but yeah, that, that 32 ACP just blew through all five of these pine boards. All right, next up, the 22 long rifle CCI mini mag. Well, uh-oh. One, two, three, four, and five. It looks like these pine boards I've grabbed for this test are not nearly as strong as the pine boards we were using in our first pine board test uh, way back in the early days of the channel. That being said, I will still shoot the nine millimeter but I'm not going to worry too much about getting fresh boards because uh, I think we all know how that's going to go down. All right, 9mm, uh, 124 grain hollow point Fiocchi coming out of the Taurus G3C. Alright, we hit a little off to the side with that one. But, you know, it hit and went all the way through the boards. Um, no way that uh, Mini Mag is going to smoke a 9mm defensive round. Alright, so luckily I did find a water bottle in my car, so we will be shooting it. Hopefully that 32 ac bullet expands. And uh, I just set up these pine boards again just to see if we have any chance at all of uh, catching that expanded bullet and getting a peek at it. Let's have at it. All right, blew the top right off that guy. Yeah, it looks like it expanded a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that big old hole. And it still went through the first board, second board, third board, fourth board, looks like. All right, let me look around a little bit and I'll pause this real quick. Fortunately, guys, I was not able to find the last round we shot out of there that went through the water bottle and the four boards, I'm pretty sure it deflected off that first and went into the ether. Um, thank you guys for coming with me today and kind of uh, playing around with this a little bit. Um, I would like to do some further testing, but unfortunately our GoPro is out of battery and I'm running out of stamina. I filmed a lot of videos today just because it's so nice out. So we're going to call it there. I'm going to try to make one long range shot let's say at 50 yards if we have enough battery withholding then you guys will see that if not i'll catch you in the next episode of mo works thank you guys so much for tuning in all the likes all the subscribers we're halfway to monetization thank you guys so much and i'll see you soon